Captain Dave Hi. Vellante, how you doing? Dave, nice <laughs> to meet Great you. to see you. This is my colleague, John Furrier. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Sorry if I'm a bit late. No problem. No worries. John, you know, we were, we Jonathan were Becker away. is the EVP of marketing at SAP. Thanks for joining us inside the Cube. Uh, some had say that uh, you're uh, transforming the brand. We were just talking about uh, last week at EMC World, Jeremy Burton, the new CMO over at EMC, has kind of cleaned up that tech image, bringing it more of a mainstream, you know, simplified messaging. Uh, apparently, you've been doing the same here at SAP. So tell us first, what's happening with the SAP brand? And obviously the marketing side, you guys are killing it with all the media, um, great mentions on Twitter, the social media doing strong, mainstream media uh, looking good. What's your, what's the current state of the union for uh, SAP? So first of all, hey, thanks for the nice mention. <laughs> I'm glad you've seen us in the social media, et cetera. I don't know if you had a chance to wander around the event, but this is a phenomenal event, almost a million square feet of floor space, 233 partners, et cetera. But kind of one of the evolution of what's happened in SAP is we're a great corporate brand. When people hear SAP, they know it's a trusted advisor, they know it's a big yeah. partner, they know that we're the Global 2000. We get the corporations. What we don't yet have is the more consumer field. And what you're starting to get out of SAP is almost the softer side of SAP. Talking directly to consumers, what does it mean for me? I know what it means for the big company, what does it mean to me? And that's the evolution of storytelling. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, obviously the customer experience at previous Sapphires comes through loud and clear. Okay. I mean, ASUG is you know really very strong, but um, now you got this blogger lounge going, you have the cube here. Um, it, it seems like there's a conscious effort to be more collaborative with, uh, with, with consumers and, uh, and influencers, is that true? You got it exactly right. Not only is it a conscious effort, it follows the overall SAP strategy. If you think about what we're doing compared to the other guys is we're the open ecosystem guys. We're the, come on in, the water's fine, let's partner on things together. Doesn't matter who you are, you might compete on this thing and partner on that other thing, everybody's in. So think of the show floor. You're here in the middle of everything. The broadcast center is right behind us. The keynote, there's no separate back room the way you're normally treated. It's, yeah. let's do this open, we're live streaming on the internet, everyone's involved. That's the way we incrementally reach hundreds of thousands of people and not just the 15,000 people. All these new channels out there, it's pretty exciting. Um, <coughs> Dave and I were just talking before you came on, Jonathan, about the, uh, the consumer brand. Obviously, it's the hot thing. Everyone's got iPhones and, and tablets, uh, iPads. kind of creates that sex appeal to the edge of a little Kindle here with our show notes on it. Um, kind of having fun, doing a little media hacking, as we say. But ultimately, there's still a brand opportunity, still a jump ball, really, in the marketplace for that brand that will become the consumerization of IT brand for the enterprise, meaning what that is, I can't really put my finger on that one brand. I think it's an open game at this point in terms of which vendors is, hey, we trust these guys, we run their business with them, and they help our employees be better consumers. Um, how do you approach that marketplace in terms of trying to capture that hill? Well, so first of all, I don't know if it's uh, an open market, maybe because it's hockey season, we can say the puck's already <laughs> dropped and uh, people are fighting on it. My beloved Sharks are doing quite well Good. right now. but. I think the question is, do you want to come at it from a consumer point of view, where privacy is dicey, there are no enterprise scalability issues, or do you want to come at it from an enterprise point of view? And we think we actually have a leg up on this, because we already have 170,000 customers around the world that trust us to run their core operations. And so when you talk about things about yeah. personal information, et cetera, we need to do that. We're also, now with the acquisition of Sybase, the number one mobility platform there as well. So. It's not replacing the people that are manufacturing the devices, but a lot of the networks are relying on us as well. It's interesting you mentioned privacy. You know, a lot of a lot of executives, CIOs in particular, talk about security. Jonathan, but you're keying on privacy. privacy. Yeah, talk, talk about how that's different, maybe from 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 security. Well, so security is a who do you give access to and when. Privacy is what information do you want to intentionally talk about or not talk about. So I'll use myself as an example. Right, I have several different blogs. I'm active on Twitter, etc. But What's I your Twitter handle? At J Becker. J B E C H E R. Yeah. Feel free to follow me if you want. Um, I probably should be live checking now my uh, okay. Blackberry to see if I get any tweets or not. Well, you Tweet him right now. We're following your CIO now. Right? So, uh, <laughs> well, I'd like to say I'm the CIO. CMO. No, we're following, oh, we're SAP CIO. Uh, oh, there you go. We had uh, Oliver, uh, if you're Oliver listening, Bushman I got them on. now. Yeah, so, uh, okay. He, he gave us his, and so, you know, we're fanboys. So, <laughs> the general idea is think of information, there is information you want broadcast everywhere and there's information you want narrow cast. And that's kind of what privacy is, which is what information do I put through what channels? And think about it, same with financial information. Certain informa financial information you want to disclose, other financial information you can't disclose. I think all information is going to have privacy tagged to it as well. This, in fact, even many bloggers, maybe you guys, in the emails they send around, they say, this is bloggable, this is private, this is non-bloggable. 
that's controlling not access to information, but the channel you want to go to, that's the next generation of yeah, privacy. Yeah, and, and uh, McDermott up on his keynote mentioned, you know, social media and specifically yeah. talking about, you know, the classic, you know, one unhappy customer tells 10. But with social media, that's amplified into the everybody knows. Yep. And that changes the, the game a bit, right? So this transparency model is great. So unlike other companies like, say, HP, they tell their people, you know, very strict, you know, don't talk to anybody. I mean, they get fired for just talking on a podcast. You guys are open. So is that culture authors. staying that way? How do you guys handle that? Because you got an organic base growing, but you got some top-down messaging. How do you balance the two? So if we err, we err on the side in the openness. Because frankly, with 50,000, 53,000 employees, they're all brand ambassadors. Part of what I say is, how do I get the message of what SAP is out to all of our employees? Because they talk at cocktail parties, they're on Twitter, they meet everybody. Yep. And frankly, right now, if you ask somebody about SAP, they'll probably say, oh, aren't they the ERP vendor? Or weren't they started in Germany? And the more <laughs> we as people have conversations about who the new reality is, the fact that we have simple applications, the fact that they're easy to use, the fact that we're in mobility, it's you guys, frankly. Well, you guys are bigger than Disney. I mean, you think about brand comparison. You got yeah. Disney and you got SAP. You guys are neck and neck, I think, like 70-something uh, uh, billion. Market cap, yeah, point. Yeah. market cap capitalization. I mean, you're not a small brand. You guys do a lot of we things. We just don't have the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Sports Center. Well, you got two, C awesome. you got two CEOs, so, <laughs> you know, twice you know that's good, good theater right there. And the CTO, and uh, you got a lot of high-powered executives at the, at the helm there. Um, but but the brand, you guys are, are doing a lot of, I see a lot of golf stuff, you do a lot of promotions. You know, we've doubled the brand value in the last 10 years. So it's the investment in the brand's paying off. And the way we've done that is not just by doing top-down advertising, which works fantastic, by the way. I think we're better than any tech company at doing that. Have you guys seen our Run Better ads? Do you get the kind of chills when that comes on in the baseball game, et cetera? Chicken yeah. skin. Chickens. Chicken skin. Oh, chi oh. <laughs> like I'm being led down garden path here, I don't know. But the other hand, Again, it's all it's going back to people. Yeah. One of the things I yeah. often say is the whole idea of B2B and B2C being two separate, that's dead. B2, business totally to business and you. business to people, yeah. Are the, yeah. B2C are the same thing. So how do you get people to tell stories? My big shtick is storytelling. And the art of storytelling is a thing that impacts the brand and things like that. Yeah. And eventually helps sales as well, of course. But you guys, when you're done, you're going to tell the story about SAP, and you're going to talk about things different. Yeah. That's what I want. I mean, to I'm really impressed with how you guys do the media thing. We've been, I've been following you guys for years on the social media side, and um, it, you, there's a montage of crowdsourcing content development out there, um, and, and people are, are creating what they can get their hands on. Yep. So you guys are not shy about pumping content into the system. Not at all. I mean, you got the big studio here. You got bloggers. You got the blogger lounge. You got the tech ed programs. You got the the mentors. And you got your executives blogging, you up should, and down. And if you haven't, you should check out SCN, which is the SAP Community Network. There are mm -hmm. more, I think, about 2.5 million members on that network as well. So not it's not just us pumping out content; yeah. it's us getting other people to organize content as well. We so, were talking to Sam uh, Juno, uh, who does the TV stuff. Very yeah. impressed with the direction you're taking that, and I can almost see maybe some documentaries coming out of SAP, Indeed, yeah. maybe some sponsoring Sports Center, the Cube. Well, it's kind of the new model, you know? isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yes. in, in, in a way, you want to try to write and contribute to the narrative in, yeah. a, in an open way. You know, not necessarily, here's why SAP's great. You're going to do that anyway. But if you can add some incremental value, you become a, a, a source of more value to the CIO and now the lines of business as well. And maybe we become the aggregation point where we start some conversations, participate in other conversations, channel a few more. But it's gone to the days where media and marketing was about we control the message. Yeah. That phrase, control the message, we all know is dead. Well, I think controlling the conversation, you can if you do it in a way that's, that's compatible with the market. Like, we're big on this whole lifestyle of tech. Yeah. Um, and there's a lifestyle. Because people, when they leave their jobs, go home and they do the same things everyone else does. They watch <laughs> movies and they do normal stuff. They watch sports. So Again. And they're all connected. So that I think integrating mm -hmm. into that is super smart and... Uh, you know, we're totally behind it, obviously. <laughs> the Cube, this is, a, uh, as we say, ESPN 1979 for tech. Um, and and with the audience, there's a huge demand for this kind of content. And that doesn't mean well, this is better than CNBC. It just means that this is just a different audience. It's exactly the point. So segment audiences, some people want the heavily produced, high-end, it's going to be, some people want the more informal access behind the scenes. Yeah. But I think you made another point, which I don't want to get lost, which is the difference between your personal life and your work life that's somewhat disappearing as best for our privacy concerns as well. Yeah. And yeah. we try to figure out how the future of software and marketing is going to look like by looking at consumer trends. Yeah. If you haven't had a chance, yeah. walk about 100 feet behind us. There's a Microsoft Xbox Connect 
literally connected to our in-memory HANA data accelerator, looking at sports data, baseball data, and you use the hand-style user interface to actually explore data. So is that a consumer app, is that an enterprise app? The distinction doesn't matter. I totally agree. I mean, the data is unstructured now. It's coming in for all different vectors you got. With mobility, it really changes the game because it's truly physical. And I think the other thing that I like about your messaging right now that I'm impressed with is this real, real time. I think when you talk about real time, it's just so beneficial to use because we're in Florida. Yeah. You can't get any more real time than that, right? So the benefits around me have to be tailored to my needs. If I've got a mobile device, and I can get content to it. That's the holy grail, and you know, the key to that is obviously in memory, low latency, and you know, fast data. So, completely agree, but it's not just getting the content to the mobile device, it's helping the person looking at that content make an instantaneous decision of what they want to do. Um, if you didn't get to see yesterday morning's uh, keynote with Gabriel Byrne, one of the things he said about is, as you walk past a store in a mall, what if they gave you an ad which is 10% off the clothes are in there. You've got to make an instantaneous decision. If you walk five more feet, they may say, sorry, now it's only 5% off. So how do you actually do the phrase, in Bill, Jim, sorry, in Bill's keynote was business in the moment. I think real time is changing its character, which is don't wait for decisions. Don't wait for six months for a mortgage. Don't yeah. wait for three months for an answer. Just instantaneously do decisions. Cool, cool deal. I mean, I, I got to think you got some serious goals on your hands this year. I mean, honestly, how do you top this? I mean, record-breaking um, attendance. Yep. What's your plans for next year? What big things you uh, got your eyes set oh, on? Oh, well, so just for the record, I haven't given up on this year yet. So <laughs> this is uh, from Orlando in May, Yeah. but we actually have two sister events. It's like halftime, well. so what's your plan for the second, second half, half of yeah. the game? Well, in the second half, we're going to actually do a dual court press. We actually have another one of these events happening in Madrid and an event happening in Beijing. And for the first time ever, we're going to do a, a crazy but wonderful experiment. The, the, in Beijing, 80% of the content is going to be done in Mandarin. Either you guys talk Mandarin? No. All right, so we're going to have to get some local reporters. My kids go to Mandarin Immersion at, in Palo Alto, so. Well, uh, there you we'll go. Maybe we'll get them to come. Yeah. So think about <laughs> get it. Get some new host day for us, you know. <laughs> we are a truly global company. Yeah. One of the few, maybe the only really global company. So if we want to reach around the world, we're yeah. going there as well. We're broadcasting around the world. But in those other two events, we're going to be broadcasting from them to other places in the world as well. When are those events? So they're in November, one in early November, one in mid-November. The first one is Madrid. I can't remember the exact dates, but if you go to sapphirenow.com, they're on that webpage. And the other one's in Beijing a couple of weeks later. Rainer um, Zinnau, who does the business uh, by design, was on the Cube early the first yesterday, and he was talking about how stringent and how global SAP is. And he says that in Germany, the privacy issues are so hardcore, it makes the United States look like, you know, taking candy from a baby, not an issue. So that by the way, I do not advocate taking candy from a baby. So. <laughs> it's just, it's just so easy I, I to do, deal by with. the way, babies should not eat candy. I mean, he's just, it's just so easy to deal with, it's not a big issue, because in Germany they're so hardcore, and SAP's processes have built into that privacy, and so that's obviously a big concern with the mobility uh, thing, with uh, you know today reporting, we're reporting that nine, um, the uh, top story on the thing is that Android phones are leaking personal data. Yep. So this is a concern, and you guys, SAP's been kind of criticized for slowing the software releases down, but your, your brand is about getting it right. That's exactly right. And I think people miss that. People always complain, ah, I want the latest release. You want the latest release, you want vulnerabilities. So I think that's what Schnabe was saying. Uh, you got exactly right. So if I think about the brand promise, the brand promise is about dependability. My business depends on it. It's not okay that if I do payroll, it's a few dollars off. It's not okay if I file my finance reports, eh, they didn't really sum up in all the different, that's not okay. It's okay if some of the social networks are down a few hours a day. So dependability, bedrock, is the heart of the brand. Well, it's hard because, I mean, in a lot of cases in the technology industry, um, taking your time can be disastrous, but this is a, a situation, this enterprise space, where that might not be the case. Well, it also depends on what definition of taking your time. You probably heard Jim say, we've gone from 12 to 16 month release cycles to now, in many cases, six to nine months. Six to nine months isn't two weeks, mm -hmm. which is sort of the toy app development yeah. model but it's still much faster than anybody in enterprise software. So he also two major releases a year is pretty yeah, I mean, good. Business objects, what was the cycle? You know, I mean, you've been in this business uh, for a while. You know, about it, every six it, months, it's about that, you know. Okay. In some cases, for really bigger things, it'd be once a year. Um, but if you know, you're downloading an app for a mobile phone, that may be every couple of weeks. But 
then you throw away the old app, and nobody really throws away their financial systems. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> App's over, I'm going to throw it away. It's my funnel building. Um, so, you know, the other thing I liked about there was the messaging of uh, Schnabe mentioned Apple of the enterprise. And he, he used Apple as a reference point, as an innovation. Actually, he made a mistake. He meant to say that Apple's going to be the SAP of the consumer market. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, so. I'll, okay. Correction. Okay. Okay. But he's on, the, he's on the innovation wave, and you know, innovation, not consolidation. Obviously, you know, the shortening life cycles, and he was pointing to Apple. Um, how does SAP become cool like Apple? How do they become the products like Apple? Is there a specific strategy you guys think you're there? Uh, if you had to grade yourself on a scale of one to 10, where are you on the coolness and then the, the product superiority? So first of all, I should just say I'm a tough grader. Um, second of all is, I think it's kind of disingenuous to declare yourself cool. It feels yeah. a little bit like putting on yeah. a leather jacket, combing back your hair and saying, yeah, yeah. I bought a big mar motorcycle, so I'm cool. Yeah. So I won't do yeah. that. Like me on Facebook, please. You yeah, know, exactly. Like, no. like, so you don't <laughs> like, really... No. <laughs> a strategy to become cool doesn't feel authentic. Yeah. Instead, what you do is you remain true to your customers. There are some yeah. customers that want bedrock, slower innovation, keep them belong. There are other customers that need faster. If you do what the customer needs from you, yeah. and if you do that at the pace they're willing to go, some things should be slow moving. Other things should be much. Mobile should be a faster development cycle. Financials, don't mess with it too much. You become cool by doing what you say you're going to do. Exactly right. Say exa so you took my line. That's where I was going. Okay. Oh, because cool. then it becomes not just dependable, but in the, the my business depends on it, gets also switched to and my future is based on it. And so that's the dichotomy of the brand. Those are the two things is future and present. Yeah, and ecosystem's a big part of that. Um, you know, we get that vibe. We do all the events. We do we, all of them. We do well all the all the cool events. Okay, we do. <laughs> all the events we can get to. <laughs> we did EMC World last week. We we we're here. We're going to be Synergy. We did VM World. We did Oracle Open World. We got HP Discover. We get dramatically different vibes. You know, one of the things that we we track. So what, is, what's our vibe? Sorry to interrupt you. So so the vibe is open. There's no doubt about it. Okay, good. We're looking for. We're talking to the ecosystem. We're talking to the partners, trying to get a sense as to it's it's know, serious. I mean, serious the vibe is, is the vibe is making money. The about, vibe is business and making money. And we look at for every dollar spent on an SAP license, you know, how much is going to be spent in the ecosystem, and that, what's the ecosystem feel about that? I don't know if you guys have ever quantified that, but it's, to us it's pretty substantial. It's a, maybe it's an order of magnitude more. I don't know if you guys look at that that so way. there but. are lots of different numbers, and I don't think we've ever gotten a hard number that everyone can look at and say, because there's money spent on services, and there's money spent Huge. on other applications. Yeah. It's obviously very big, yeah. but here's the thing. A lot of people, when they say ecosystem, it's lip service. Yeah. Sorry about that, because they always think of themselves as the sun in the middle of the galaxy, and everybody revolves around them. And when we say ecosystem, we really mean in some cases we lead, in other cases we come and help, et cetera. It's, we're all networked together. So think of a network model more than a sun in the middle and the planets revolving around it. Yeah. And peer to peer. peer uh, well said. That's, and if you have that psychology when you're building an ecosystem, it's much more successful. And well, you guys are also, I mean, the ecosystem is also about making money for people too. And what we're seeing here is that there's been a relationship and a track record of trust of money making. Yeah, there's been, hey, I want things a little bit yeah. differently, some transformation going on. But for the most part, you can just tell the vibe is it's like people are doing deals, sales are being booked. Yeah. I mean, people have to run their business. There's some tech going on and business at the same time. So I think yeah, we walk the floor, people are excited, right, John? I mean, they're, they're happy, they're smiling. It's not like some, some of the events are like, oh, I got to be world. here. People want to be here. So maybe I'll turn the table on you guys for a second. So sure. since you've walked the floor, have you seen anything that you didn't expect to see? What's the coolest thing you've seen, to use your word? So to me, it's um, the service providers are buzzing, right? Yeah. That whole transformation that's going through their business. Now, we talk a lot about SAP and the complexity of legacy software and, and how customers can maybe manage through that. We talk about that a lot in the Wikibon community. That oftentimes, uh, you know, complexity is sometimes a euphemism for printing money to a services company. Yeah, yeah. But the services guys that we're talking to are embracing the simplicity message. They see that as a real opportunity for them to transform their customers' businesses, and yep. they see it as an enrichment opportunity. That, to me, is the coolest thing that I've seen. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, we, my asset test is I kind of had the sizzle and the steak formula. Like, you know, with the sizzle, there should be some steak. Which one are you, sizzle, um, which one's steak? Well, we both have some sizzle and steak. <laughs> okay. And we both bring some meat on the bone, you know, so to speak. Like uh, the sizzle the sizzle is obviously the fast, you know, the in-memory with the mobile. Yep. Very sizzly. Got the iPads, like the tech jewelry. I mean, you see guys walking around filming the show, holding an iPad up. I mean, I find that personally hilarious and great. Um, the steak is really the, the meat on the bone. That is, is that there's a services angle here that, that is kind of a, a client services uh, circa 1990 buzz. Yep. Where it's like... There's some real transformation where there's some dollars to be made, business to be done, the commerce side of the business. I find that kind of, the, not the sexy story, 
but that kind of fuels it. So that's kind of the thing that I see. Um, and in terms of the coolest thing, I do like the wall. Yeah. The wall is phenomenal. It's great uh, demo. That's the, probably the coolest thing. And obviously the cube is in the Vloggers Lounge. Um, we love the cube. The cube yeah. is, we're here. So, <laughs> what do you know. think of the cube? I, the cube is phenomenal. <laughs> it's another example of open, letting anybody get access, et cetera. Shinobi said, this is a huge concept. He loved it. Because he was comfortable. He didn't get wired up with CNBC. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's just sitting no down. Makeup. No makeup. <laughs> oh, yeah, no makeup. He was looking. Well, he had no a hot nice, lights. nice suit on. And, and uh, But it's, it's a great show. I mean, I'm really excited to see you guys uh, kind of branch into that consumer brand in the IT because I think you have a good story there. Great loyalty amongst uh, the people we talk to. Um, yeah, you get your complainers. Hey, I want the latest core. You know, this, 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 dude, that camp. But they're loyal. Um, and they're not really kind of throwing you under the bus. So maybe a couple things here. Um, one is, love that you brought up the service partners. Um, one of the innovations we've done over the last year frankly announced uh, Q3 mostly started is rapid deployment solutions, which include packaged services. What does that mean? That means if you want to deploy a part of the business suite, you don't have to deploy the whole thing. You deploy something small, like something within the CRM area, and you can actually get up and running in six to 12 weeks rather than, frankly, six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So you might say, well, why would a service partner care about packaged services? That's because instead of just doing implementation, they can shift to some of the higher value things of, well, what are you going to do? What actions are you going to take? The other thing is, is I need to, You guys are going to be part of my army, right? One of the things I said is we're transforming the brand, so you've got to have stories to tell. Yeah, yeah. We're all storytellers. So what percent of the world's beer is based on SAP systems? 70%. That's you want a great to make story. It yeah. We're going to change our <laughs> tagline from uh, eating your own dog food to drinking your own from beer. Your own since beer, you make right. most of the beer in the, in the yeah. world. Or you know. if you prefer chocolate, you can say 80% of the world's <laughs> chocolate. There you go. You can run sweeter. Yeah, uh, you guys, I'm telling you, you guys, to me, the next brand, we were joking about, we call ourselves the ESPN of tech. Yeah. You guys could be our Budweiser, you know, like every, you know. Or well, maybe Budweiser. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> SAP. <laughs> Come up with a tagline, you know. Brought to you by <laughs> Web Gems. I mean, we could actually make a Web Gems show, Dave, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, congratulations uh, on Thank a you. great show. You're doing a great job. Uh, good luck in the second half of the year at the big events. Um, anything around the corner that you're playing with marketing-wise that's different, that's new, taking advantage of the big data and mobile that uh, you can share with us that you're teasing out there? I think the short answer is you saw SAP strategy today. It is in memory. It's cloud and mobility. So think about how those are going to transform how marketing would be. Traditional marketing has been very analog. Yeah. The next generation of stuff is going to be digital. It's all going to be available everywhere, and it's going to be sent to you on your mobile device. So if I'm wandering around asking you for your mobile number, you might know why. Yeah, cool. Jonathan, great story. Pushing Stick the envelope. Thanks right. for coming to the Cube. Appreciate it. it. Great Thanks to have for having you. me on. Great right. guest. Thanks so much. Appreciate the Cube. Watch us on sapphirenow.com if you can't come live. Sapphire Now, they got all the footage, amazing amount of video being pumped out. Uh, these guys are doing a good job with social media up and down the stack, high-end messaging, down to the trenches. Um, he's leading the charge. He's like Jeremy Burton, Dave. He 